we are going to get right into game one. Let's do it. And you got to imagine these guys are already hyped up to play. They've, they've been sitting here waiting. One thing I want to mention on the loadouts at the end, that there are there's something called a GA or a gentleman's agreement. And so there's specific weapons that are specific loadouts that are agreed by both teams not to be used in match. And so it kind of provides for more of an equal matchup, one, one that both teams can agree on because there's some weapons that are very imbalanced and that, that cause for bad competitive play. But I believe ECAC follows the Call of Duty League or the CDL rules. Um, and so it, it makes for a fair competitive atmosphere that, that's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. This game is very fast-paced. And having that gentleman's agreement can help both of the teams feel like they are competing at an equal level. Mm -hmm. Nobody has an unfair advantage. And as we can see here, it looks like the AMCATS, um, the AMCATS team is doing a really good job of controlling this hard point, and they even um, rotated onto the next one very quickly. Evan, I, I think that the, the teams are flipped on, on our screens. It looks like oh. that the Sagu Lions are in the red and the Amcats are in the purple. So it looks oh, okay. like Sagu's actually the leading right now. Okay, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that seems to be what's happening. So the Amcats team is actually the Sagu Lions team. And the purple Sagu Lions team is actually the AMCATS team. And it looks like we are looking from the AMCATS point of view right now from Muffin Man himself. Yes. Um, so it's kind of a different perspective than what we're used to right now. Yeah. But so, yeah, Sagu getting an early lead. Yeah. And here Mewtwo holding down the control point. And um, yeah, the, it looks like he's being preemptive. Now, one of the aspects of Hardpoint is that the players here can see where the Hardpoint is going to move to. They see where it's going, and wow, Aether with a great double kill there. But the players actually know where the hard point is moving ahead of time. So what they can do is they can set themselves up at the hard point that's coming up later, mm -hmm. take control of it before it even gets there, so that when it moves, they're already there and are taking control of that hard point. Yeah, and a lot of that comes down to map knowledge, because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe each time it rotates in the same specific pattern. So Mewtwo putting in a good amount of hours in this game, excuse me, um, he's able just to know where the hard point's going to be, so you can leave one person there to hold and just fend off by themselves, while you can send another one or two to go ahead and pre-rotate to go ahead and get some extra points on the board, as we look like it's a pretty even match so far. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like the Sagu lines at the beginning were getting quite a lead, but the AM Cats closing that gap, making sure that they are having control of whatever hard points the Sagu Lions are not able to hold. But the Sagu Lions fighting back, fighting back strong. Mewtwo and Aethy are both getting picks right there. Um, pick is whenever you take out an opposing player, and so you can say kill, pick. Pick's usually easier to say. Huge explosion on the snow bear right there. But um, you can definitely see that Mewtwo and Aethyr are going to be your ones that slay out the most, or the ones that get the most picks. While Snowbear and Ogden are kind of more your objective time players, they're going to try and get those points for the team, while Mewtwo and Aethyr are trying to defend those two. Here it looks like to be a pretty heavily contested hard point, but the Sagu Lions getting control and getting a bit of a lead here. They're about 20 seconds or 20 points above the AM Cats Call of Duty team. But AM Cats not giving it up for long, taking some for themselves and closing that gap once again, keeping this a pretty, pretty close game for the most part. Absolutely, with both of these teams sitting at three and one, you gotta imagine it's gonna be a pretty fair fight. I, as the season progresses through ECAC, the matches just get better and better as the teams kind of just level out. So de definitely a fun one, especially with Sagu coming off of a pretty hard loss last week with the 0-3 sweep. You got to imagine that they want to try and swing things back into their favor this week. And here, Ognin and Aether trying to set up something on this on this hard point, taking good control. Oh, but Ognin sitting in the corner, not able to hold it, but... Angry Snow Bear there to follow up and recapture that hard point. And it looks like the Sagu Lions are walking away with a bit of a lead here. Wow, Ooh. great kill by Angry Snow Bear. Uh, as you can see, this game is very fast. It moves very quickly. Lots of things are happening. Oh, wow, great kill with a grenade there by Ognan using his 
uh, is all the weapons that he has available to him. Wow, and getting three kills in a row, doing a great job at holding down his area. Yeah, most of the time with Hardpoint, these guys are kind of just crouching in a corner, just waiting for someone to, to round it out and not peek. And usually it just comes to a free pick, and now Sagu's getting a lot of time on the board. Absolutely. And these, uh, a lot of times you'll hear different words like pick, frag, um, uh, terminology like that. Those are all just fancy words for a kill. So saying someone got a pick Ooh. means they got a kill. And there you go, Aethir with a double kill there on the Hardpoint. <laughs> Great job. Wow, the Sagu Lions are kind of running away with this lead here. They're over they're over 60 points ahead. Now 70 points up on the AM Cats team. And you can see that Sagu is moving as a unit right now, just getting the, getting the picks that they need um, time and time again, and then constantly pre-rotating to the next point. So giving up time when they need to, you let, let the other team get a few points on the board so you can snag a few more of your own later on. But, like, Ognan winning a contest right there. I mean, just being able to win these 1v1s is detrimental right now. Yeah, but the, the AM Cats team, they're fighting hard. They're not giving it up easily. And they're trying to close in oh. on the Sagu Lions. Oh, and my goodness, Aethir. He had the movement for a second, but he was, wasn't able to close it out. No, the, the AM Cats team is, is trying to do what they can to um, take tradable gunfights and, and what that means is you'll have two people turning around a corner or sh trying to uh, shoot at an opponent at the same time so that even if one of you gets killed you're hoping that the other one can kill that opponent before they can kill both of you and those kills being Ooh. traded if you will and keeping the game as even as possible. Yeah, and Sagu getting a squad wipe right there. Squad wipe whenever you take out the whole other team at the same time. So all, now all four of their members have to wait to respawn. And so that, that's a lot of free time that Sagu gets to get on point. Sagu Lions having control of this next hard point. Eighth year, as you see there, okay. with a five-man killing spree. And Ognan locking down this point. Not giving it up. Oh. oh! Oh, but he gets the grenade wow. kill. Makes up for it. Absolutely. Now they're on the home stretch. Sagu just looking for about 40 more points to close this game one out. You need 250 seconds, and each second each second on the hard point is one point. You need 250 points to win. And the Sagu lines are looking really good right now in this first game. And see, even here, even though they're not in control of the hard point, they're not allowing the AM Cats team mm -hmm to get any kind of ground, to get any kind of momentum there. And almost double the score of the AmCats team. You can see the bottom on the player cams there. They have people all around them in the arena right now. There's people moving around, but all four of them are locked in. You can see how focused they are. They, they want to walk away with a win this week. And these two teams trying not to let the other walk away with any serious advantage get any genuine momentum and the amcats are really holding this point well and stopping the sagu lions from getting some kind of recapture here and are trying to close the gap as best they can and the amcats team doing a great job at but uh, the sagu lions closing in as best they can and they were able to take the point and now they don't have a whole lot more to till they take this game one there's still going to need to be one more point that spawned in before Sagu can close it out. But I definitely think that the a AM Cats have started playing more together as a team. Um, so they're not getting picked off one by one just randomly throughout the, throughout the match. But they're starting to move more as a unit and getting, getting the picks that they need whenever they need to. And it's definitely showing on the scoreboard that they're getting some more points. But Sagu just, just waiting for them to round the corner, getting the pick, and then getting the free time on the board. And here's the Sagu Lions. And if they can keep this hard point oh. for the next 10 seconds, the AMCATs will have to take a loss, and the Sagu Lions will get a win for this game Ognan. one. Oh my goodness. Ognan going off here. One second left, and there it is. The Sagu Lions take game <laughs> one. And as you see there, it says AMCATs, but again, that is because the team names have been switched. <laughs> Someone jump in their comms and tell them to flip teams. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the Sagu Lions are going to take game one here. And 
both of these teams doing a really good job at, at fighting hard and, and giving it all they got. Ognan with 30 kills by the end of it. And Dude, Angry insane. Snow Bear with 24 kills. Both of them doing such a good job at the end there. Holding their own, fighting well. And I think that was a great game won by the Sagu Lions. And here, looking at this replay, not giving up any of these points. Ognan doing such a good job at getting these kills and 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 holding down the fort. I think Ognan's SMG loadout on this map was was arguably just better at the moment. Um, typically, there's going to be two SMGs and two ARs at a run, and Ognan being on the SMG, just getting two, three shots off, and then it just frees up so much time for the team. Yeah, and the thing about SMGs being submachine guns, they are smaller, more compact. You can move quicker. They don't do as much damage, and they don't have as long of range, but you can usually aim quicker with them. And as you can mm -hmm. see there, Ognan with the grenade kills, and then ARs being assault rifles, they're longer range, bigger damage, but they're slower and they're bulkier. Mm -hmm. And in this map, it feels like there's a lot of tight areas, a mm -hmm. lot of close quarters. And so Ognan really using that uh, SMG, that submachine right there. gun. Look at that, how quick he's able to get into his aim and be one second ahead on the opponent, allowing him to get these kills. And mm -hmm. wow, great job by the Sagu Lions. But Definitely. I mean, the AM Cats, they didn't give up without a fight. Mm -hmm. They they were whenever they had control of a hard point, they held it well, they fought well. And what 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 do the AM cats need to do to fight this Sagu Lions defense here? Uh, I definitely think moving as a team is going to be a big part because there were there were times in, during that last match that they would just get picked off one by one that they weren't together. And so they were just sprinting off by themselves while Sagu's already pre-holding a corner. Mm. And so as soon as they see him, they can just take it out. So moving together, able to trade off your teammates, but at the same time holding your sprint button a little less. I, I, I know you want to have that movement. You want to be able to move quick, but you got to be able to shoot your gun. You can't run and shoot at the same time. That's very fair. Very, very fair. And hopefully soon we will be getting into this game two. This game mm. two is search and destroy. Mm. Now this is where a lot of the strategy components come in in this Call of Duty competitive series. Because search and destroy is pretty similar to Valorant. It's pretty similar to games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive mm. where you have this bomb arming and bomb defusing scenario. Um, Crazy Kyle, when it comes to this game where it's played over a series of rounds and one of the most interesting mechanics is that when you die in a round, you do not respawn. Mm -hmm. So numbers advantage is a huge part of this. How can you play to the strengths of that numbers advantage and how can you avoid disadvantages? Uh, definitely like how we were just talking about before, don't run off on your own. Mm. Don't try and be the superhero solo player making everything happen. Move as a team and treat your life as value because the second that you, you get picked off, you're, you're done for. Mm. And so you want to have the numbers advantage because the more weapons you have on the, the map, the better chances you have of winning. So definitely just moving together as a team, discussing which point you want to go to and who's holding what angle I think is going to be crucial in this game too. Absolutely. And here we have the Sagu Lions, and it is in the correct... <laughs> Let's go. It is on the correct titles there. So the Sagu Lions... Ooh, the fake window jump. ...are starting... I believe they are starting on defense. So they are trying to prevent the AM Cats team from planting their bomb on one of the sites. And it looks like the AM Cats are actually going to get an early plant onto this B site. But at the same time, you 2 already picked off one of their members, so Sagu has the numbers advantage by one. But as I say, that Mewtwo runs in, gets gunned down, but Ognan will get a pick instead. Wow. This movement by Aether. Dude, I can tell you wow. Aether has been putting the hours into this game. He doesn't have a computer in his room right now, so he spends a lot of time in the arena. And so I'll walk in there, and he's just doing parkour around maps, just learning all these different little tricky spots, yeah. all, the, all these ways he can basically get in the mental game in the opponent's head and just bait him out, fake him out. Just pull angles that we haven't seen before. Yeah, that was really impressive. Uh, looking at the end of that round there, he was able to climb on top of the fences and climb through these windows to get a really um, sneaky, advantageous mm -hmm. position on the opponent. Very well played by Aether. And now the Sagu Lions have the bomb, and they are tasked with planting it on one of the bomb sites. And the Ooh, AM Cats... Marker. Yes, very well done. Good uh, grenade throw by Mewtwo. The oh, There's another one. The mic isn't cool, trying to rush through the middle of the map there and it not paying off. 
And also keep in mind, we in the spectator view can mm, see yes. the outlines and the names of all of the players, even on the AMCATS team. But our Sagu Lions team is not able to see that because we're only able to see it in our spectator mode. Mm -hmm. So the Sagu Lions are trying to guess where the opponent is, how they can get the edge on them, trying to predict where they're going to come from and, and how they can best counteract these uh, engagements, these gunfights. Mm -hmm. And Sagu getting the, the bomb plant on A while the AM cats are trying to defend B site. And it looks like Snowbear gets taken out right there, but Ogden will get the Avenge. And it's all up to me too. But the bomb has blown up. Pretty much once the bomb has been planted, now the defending team has to defuse it. And they only have a set amount of time. So at that point, Sagu just has to sit here and wait until that the bomb goes off. That was a great pick by Mewtwo off the start of that round. He's done that two rounds in a row now. It looks like he's running the AR class for the night, so playing a much more ranged game and just able to, to get those long-range kills when needed. Yeah, the AR is really good at holding down long hallways, big archways, just because it has the range, it has the firepower, and it allows you to basically cut out certain areas right there. Wow. Snowbear got it. Angry Snowbear getting a grenade kill from basically across the map. Great job. Yeah, imagine he's feeling good after that one as wow. he gets another one and Ognan Ognan gets a third. Getting a kill on the bomb carrier there against Blues. And now the Sagu Lions, because when, when you kill the person who was carrying the bomb, they actually drop it. And so now the Sagu Lions, if they can prevent the AM Cats team from even getting to the bomb, wow. Sagu Lions wow. being so aggressive in the search and destroy game. And it's they have taken the little pieces of momentum that the AM Cats team is giving them, and they are running away with it here. And look how efficient they're being right there. Mewtwo, I believe, only missing like one shot or something like that. Just Sagu moving with a purpose. And there's the, the grenade throw off of, off of spawn. And it's just Sagu is moving with a purpose right now, and everything that they do has a reason, and it is working in their favor. Absolutely. We're getting into this round four here. We're going to see, what do the AMCATs have to do here, Crazy Kyle? What, what, as you said in the beginning, they need to be working together. They need to be fighting as a team. How can that be executed on a map like this? I definitely think at this point, they just need to, to try a different tactic. They've been, they've been trying to play these specific angles, but it looks like Sagu is just already holding them. So at this point, you need to take a different angle. You need to look at the game in a different perspective and see what you can work around the Sagu team. Find one little weakness and capitalize on it. And whatever that may be, whatever that looks like for this AM Cats team, they need to find it quick. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think the AM Cats can do it. They've shown that they can take these gunfights. They've shown that they can they can work together and hold angles. Wow, Mewtwo, great kill from across the map. But Ghost getting a kill onto Ognan. Right now, it is a three versus three. The game is even, and this is a chance. If the AM Cats want any kind of lead here, mm -hmm. this is the moment. And I think what you said, them sticking together, they're all covering each other's blind spots. I think that's how you're going to win a game like this, where numbers advantage is such a big deal. And wow, Muffin Maniac doing a great job of staying hidden in the corner there, getting a pick onto Angry Snow Bear. Me too only has about 15 seconds left to plant the bomb. He's going to go ahead and get that down now and force AM Cats to push on the site where him and Aether could potentially work together and just take them out slow and steady. We'll see oh. what the Sagu Lions can do in response. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like much. Aether being the last one alive for the Sagu Lions, and they are closing in on him fast. Movement keeping him alive. There's about 30 seconds left as Aether tries to pull a clutch out of nowhere. Makes some magic happen right now as the fusing starts. Aether pops out. He gets one. He gets two, wow. but he can't finish off the third. Oh my goodness, that was almost, almost that insane. Was, that was almost so impressive. It was impressive, but that was almost mm -hmm. a round four win for the uh, Sagu Lions. And, and Clutch being in a position where you are at a deficit, you're at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. but you find a way right to come there. back. And he thought he got that kill, but he had to put one more shot into him. I think yeah. that one second of hesitation caused uh, that last guy to take Aether out, but he had the right idea just waiting for the, the fuse sound to start so he know that one's distracted and that he can take on two more at the same time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I agree that that one shot can make all mm -hmm. the difference, and he um, having the intuition for this game, believing he had placed all the shots that he needed, but needed a single more. But yep. if you're still doing a great job getting a double kill at the end there,
And oh wow, Ognan running in, getting a double kill here. Ognan being an absolute madman in this the middle and the in the bottom side of the map. Oh my goodness. Wow, and Aether getting a kill himself. Now we're back to a four versus one. And there we go. And the Sagu Lions <laughs> take the next round. You can see him laughing and and uh, hyping each other up in there. That was a great round for the Sagu Lions. I think Aether's still a little bit bitter about that last round. You get a little, little excited now. Yeah. But Ogden, Ogden going, with get a three eight piece there. kills oh my in total goodness. for the search and destroy match. That is so impressive. It's good to see. It's good to see Ognan and Aether like bouncing off of each other, just having fun. But at Sagu looking to find two more rounds, uh, six rounds in order to get out of an S and D match. So two more rounds will finish off with. Oh my goodness, a sniper Mewtwo. Wow. Are you okay, sir? Mewtwo with a sniper rifle. This is very rare for um, Call of Duty competitive sports because oh, oh big, wow. big brain dump. And Mewtwo getting a kill with the sniper rifle down the middle. Aether. Oh, and oh. it is now a two versus one. But both of the Sagu Lions have their sights on him. And wow, the Sagu Lions getting another win. Sagu Lions only need one more round to take this game too. And then that will put them one match away from getting this conference win. Look at that big brain right there. I believe that was Aether. No, it was Ogden, excuse me, jumping behind the door. So as the opponent jumps in, the, the line of sight's cut off and he can get the pick. And then Ogden just waiting for the last one to round the corner and take him out. Great plays by Ogden right now. He He's doing a phenomenal job. Absolutely. He's doing so well, <laughs> holding his angles, playing smart, and the Sagu Lions are looking really solid. Last week, it was a bit of a struggle. Oh. Wow, Mewtwo, great shot. Oh, oh but they took him out with a sniper rifle wow, their own. Wow, the sniper rifle duel down the middle of the map, and the AM Cats are going to get that kill great kill by the way and it's big taking out Mewtwo early on one of the one of the better fraggers in this Sagu team excuse me yeah. and so now Sagu's just going to play for time and figure out where the bomb's going to be planted and potentially retake we'll see what the Sagu lines are able to do in response to this oh snow bear oh just ghost getting caught getting uh catching angry snow bear off guard oh and Right there, Ognan seeing Ghost and taking him out. Now, uh, seeing where the point is okay. at, not able to get the kill there. Aether with his redemption arc right yes. now. Yes, now Aether back in the one versus three position. He wants this win. We'll see what he's able to do here. He only has about wow, 20 seconds that, left. The movement, using this building as cover for himself. Trying not to get caught out. Find the one. first one. Oh, and almost getting that second one there, but the the positioning advantage of that mm -hmm. of the Amcats player, I believe that was that was Mike or Muffin Maniac. Mm. And I think at the same time there wasn't enough time for Aether to defuse the bomb at the end. So even mm. if he got all three picks, then I don't think it would have mattered. I think the bomb would have went off anyways. Yeah. But it's still match point regardless, and Sagu's just trying to close out this map too. Yeah. And, I mean, right now, AM Cats, they have some momentum here, and they're playing smart. They're, they're getting the bombs down as quick as they can. They're covering all of the angles that would be in their teammates' blind spots. And we'll say, oh, oh, wow. Mike isn't cool. Great shot from down the middle of the map on Mewtwo. And that makes it a four versus three situation. I think Mewtwo's probably going to go back to wow. his AR after this. Most I, likely. I don't think he's happy about that. No, I don't think so either. And Blue's getting a kill. Ooh. Wow, Blue's getting a second kill there. Now it's just, it's How just does Aether here <laughs> once again. How does this keep happening? <laughs> he, he's playing very, very patient, very slow. Oh, oh and, and like I said before, shoot more than you sprint. And that, yeah. that sprint right there. He was able to shoot in time, and AM Cats are slowly pulling this one back. Yeah, absolutely. They are taking this momentum and running away with it. It is not over yet, folks. We could see the AM Cats, if they can take this and push it forward to a round six, they could take this match, too. Mm -hmm. But the Sagu Lions, they only have one more. Hey, it's one still more anyone's game. Absolutely. They only need to win one more round, and then that is it. So we'll see if they're able to close this out. Getting into round nine, I believe this is. Sagu on the defending side. 
Me too. Did go back to the AR. Uh, I called that one. I'm uh, not patting myself on well the back. Well played, well played. Absolutely. Knowing your teammates. But you see, Saku just choosing to defend the A site while the AM Cats plays on the complete opposite side. And it's just a matter of waiting now as there's a minute left to plant the bomb. We'll see if the AM Cats are able to get this down. It's still a four versus four. Both teams playing very safe and playing very slow, but it looks like they're going to start planting onto this Ooh. B site. And <laughs> the Snowbear Sagu saw the sniper. Yeah, and the Sagu lines have caught on to this. Oh, wow. Almost getting it. Oh, he did get a kill there. Ognan, it was, Ognan finished up. it off. Yes. Yeah. Ognan being there with the crossfire. And now it is a four versus three scenario. And the aid's ringing into the building. He's getting hit markers ringing out. Ognan just waiting to find something. Checking his angles. He, he thinks he's playing Valorant right now. Yeah, he is, he is looking at every possible situation. Mewtwo with the kill on Muffin. Oh, oh and Ognan missing the shot there. And Blues, oh Aether no, wasn't unfortunately. Able to I was just Angry Snow Bear. It's a one versus one. And oh, man. Wow. <laughs> angry Snow Bear waving his hand there, knowing that that was, that that was, a, that was a loss. I definitely think Ogden right there wanting to, to get that pick, but he just wasn't able to get enough shots off in time. And then just Mewtwo not able to finish off either. Aether was diffusing, so he thought he had coverage from his teammates, but as soon as those two dropped, he was just a sitting duck. Yeah. Yeah, hoping that his teammates would be able to cover him. And unfortunately, it wasn't enough, but... I mean, this AM Cats team, they Slowly are bring, pulling it back. They are bringing it back. And right now, we are in a four versus five situation. Now, this is, this is different from Valorant, to where in Valorant, you have to win by two if you get up to oh close to winning point. But in this, the first team to hit six round wins mm -hmm. wins the set, or wins the match, if you will. Yep. And AM Cats holding on by tooth and nail right now, just trying to pull it back. I don't think it was a full reverse sweep, but it, it was something similar to that. But Sagu just needing that last one to close it out. It's just a matter of finishing now. We'll see what the AM Cats team are going to be able to do here. They're Mewtwo. fighting on this on this bomb site. Mewtwo unable to find the pick that he's looking for, but Ognan finds one instead. Ognan getting the bomb down now. And both, now of the teams, take. both of these teams playing so patient. Mewtwo getting a kill on the mic. It's a four versus two. This is exactly where you want to be as the Sagu Lions. Mm -hmm. You have the numbers advantage. You have the bomb down. Now, the AM Cats team only have 30 seconds to defuse it. There's a, and there wow, it is. Wow, and there it is. The Sagu Lions taking this second game. Dude. And Ognan with the little mini pop-off right there, dude. Yeah. He is feeling good tonight. I don't yeah. know I don't know what it is. I think Snow Bear passed him a monster or something. But he, <laughs> he's likely. feeling fantastic right now. Yeah, he is 14 kills. That oh is my so goodness. good for Search and Destroy. The thing about Search and Destroy, because you die... Um, if you get killed in the round and you do not respawn, if you get killed earlier in the round, that's a whole round that you're mm -hmm. having no impact in the game. So the fact that he's able to get 14 kills that is, huge. That is so impressive. I think that's a, that's a season record for the most kills in one S&D match. And so just Ogden playing the, the game of his life tonight. Absolutely. But just Sagu moving as a unit right now. And this definitely grenade <laughs> kill by Mewtwo it was so <laughs> impressive. It was so good. No, it was Snowbear wow. who got oh, the grenade. Oh, it was Snowbear. That's what it was. It, it was Snowbear. So, they, they just teamed up on the grenades. But definitely Sagu shutting down the AM Cats' the momentum. They had a huge swing there. And shutting that down was, was detrimental. Aether right here. I, I thought he had this 1v3 clutch. That was so but close. You gotta imagine that they're glad that they're up 2-0 now. There's only potentially one match left that is Sagu's on match point. You gotta think they're feeling good going into this last map. Yeah, yeah, I think the Sagu lines are feeling strong. Now, Amcats are not out of this. They did mm -hmm. really good bringing it back. They brought it to only a one round deficit. They mm -hmm. it was four and five, and unfortunately they weren't able to close it out. But I think in those rounds they were really doing that that coordinated push strategy, and I think it was working mm -hmm. out really well. Also, I believe it was Mike isn't cool with that sniper in the middle of the map mm -hmm. those couple rounds. That really helped them because they were taking um, those fights from a 4v4 to a 3v4, and that mm -hmm. is always a great position to be in, yep. even if it's just a single person numbers advantage. And looking at some of the, the plays from this hard point map, we're about to go into control, I believe is what it's called. It's yes. going to be pretty similar to hard point. And so um, 
Sagu just wanting to close out. But we talked about this off, off stream beforehand and mm-hmm. everything about what what we think the potential scoreline is for the night. Mm. I still think AM Cats are going to be able to snag one. I think mm. Sagu's going to win at the end of the day with three, but I, I think AM Cats can pull one with a mm. – it's going to be a 3-1 scoreline at the end of the okay. day. Okay. I, I do – I have heard in the past that Control is their weakest game mode. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is coming from the Sagu Lions team. They have said that control is the one that they have to work the hardest on and is the least impactful for them. But honestly, the Sagu Lions are feeling so good. You saw Aether there almost mm-hmm. getting a three versus one situation. You see Ognan getting 14 kills. Honestly, I really think we could see a 3-0 sweep from the Sagu Lions as mm-hmm. long as they can keep that momentum, lock it down. And as we go into this game three, this mm-hmm. control... Game mode, we are going to see, oh, uh, I believe they were doing maybe a network test there. I'm not sure if it was network test or just something was set up wrong. Mm. That's usually what it is whenever settings are being changed in between matches. There's probably some little thing that wasn't implemented. And so yeah. Just Most a likely. quick restart. No, yeah. no worries. Yeah. But um, as we're looking at this, we're seeing these two teams playing at such a highly competitive level. Mm-hmm. And you being a part of the Sagu Esports um roster being part of the mm-hmm. Sega Esports Rocket League team when it comes to a practice session working with your team yep. what are some key things to work on to think about how do you prioritize your time because in esports it's a little different than real sports but mm-hmm. you use so much of your brain power how do you manage that uh, I definitely think esports is more similar to traditional sports than what it seems like. Mm. But definitely when it comes to practice times, that's time when you focus with your team. What are you going to do in a team aspect? How are multiple people going to work together and intertwine into into something? So like on your own time, it would be more like your aim training and your positioning and where you want to do all this little stuff. When you're with your team, you're focusing as a team. Mm. And so definitely utilizing that the... Two hours, I believe, is what they they do for the most part a day. Usually sometimes longer. Mm. That's how it is. Ah. But sit down, watch a VOD review with some buddies who are probably better than you because I know Mewtwo has a lot of friends Mm. who are are very good at this game. Very good at this game. Very good at this game. So they sit down, do like little mini coaching sessions and everything. And so just sit down, talk. What can we do better as a team? Mm. What can I do to help you and what can you do to help me? And I think that's what makes them such a solid team is that they can intertwine and work together so well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. And... Taking those times by yourself to work on that, mm-hmm. those individual mechanics, like you said, positioning, movement, aim. But then when you come together, thinking the strategy, thinking the dynamics of yep. the map, how people are going to play with each other, all very important concepts. And as we're going to see going into this game three on this control game mode, I'm not entirely sure what map this is, but I do know that this map is inside essentially one giant building. (laughs) And this building has lots of hallways, has lots of small corridors, so I think we're going to see a lot of those submachine guns, those -hmm. those close range uh, exchanges here. And it looks like the teams have been switched again, so the AM Cats will be in purple now, and Saku will be in the red. Yes. Aether and Snowbear both getting huge picks. The, The crazy part about control is that one team's attacking, one team's defending right but you each only have 30 lives so it's either you capture the two points or the other team takes away all 30 of your lives so you're able to respawn up to a certain amount of times until that that time hold that little counter runs out so you can have one teammate die like 15 times and another one not so much and so that's kind of the infuriating part is you got to work together as a team and use your deaths wisely make sure you don't get picked off yeah yeah i agree i think managing those respawns and if you start getting killed too many times, maybe taking a step back, playing a little defensive, mm. playing playing a little more patient. I think that's a really great strategy going forward into this. And as of right now, we're looking at the AM Cats with a little bit of a lead here. They're not allowing the Sagu Lions to to hold this point. Flip it in your head again. Yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah. Oh yes. So the so the um, the Sagu Lions now with uh, 23 lives. And the Sagu lines with 21 lives, so the, the AMCATs now are getting a bit of a... Li- well, so are the lives swapped so, as well? Yes, yeah, so Sagu will be on the red, so they're on the left side now, and then the AMCATs are on the right side. Okay, so... so that's kind of how everything is. So Sagu's okay. already captured one point. They're just okay. trying to capture this B point, yes. but a third of their lives have already been taken away. Yeah. So now they're, they're just trying to capture that last point before oh, they, they run out of life. Yeah, but the Sagu lines are... Evening up Ogden. this live count and Dude, Ogden, he's going crazy tonight. Yeah, and Aether on the point right now. 
this might be a very quick game if the if the AM cats are not able to stop them and there we go. That's there's, it. Okay. There's not one. Oh, but now you flip sides. Yes. So in this game mode, there I and I hope I mentioned this earlier. I'm not entirely sure, mm. but it is a best of three. A so best, of, best of five. First it's a best of three. five. Okay. So first to three. Best yes. of five. So the first team to win three rounds <laughs> of this control point yep. gets. The match and so win. now Sagu will go on to the defensive side. So essentially their main goal is just to protect these points, not not let anyone onto it. Because mm -hmm. if if it gets captured, you lose. That's how it works. Yeah. So they're gonna have to take away all thirty of those lives first. But with the way Ognan's been playing, I'm not too not too stressed about it right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Ognan is doing such a phenomenal job. And Aether covering his corners, not allowing him to uh be over aggressive mm -hmm. and each one um covering each other in ways that allows them to reach their maximum potential. Yeah. Playing to each other's strengths, if you will. Aether already finding one. Wow. Mewtwo finding the second Aether one. And There's Mewtwo. the teamwork. Look at that teamwork right wow. there. That's how it's done, fellas. Closing in, locking down that zone, and stopping them from capturing it. That was so but fast. Here's the thing. is The AM Cat's got one tick, so it kind of works in ticks. Mm. So if you get past that tick, Sagu can kind of make the line go back a little bit, so it's not as much captured, but it goes up into that tick. Mm. So now they, they, like a third of it's already captured. So whenever they go back and try and capture it again, it's a little bit easier than it was before. Yeah, like almost like a capture checkpoint, if yes. you will. So it saves certain positions of capture. And wow, so many Angus lives Snowbear. already missing. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The AM Cats team with only 18 lives. It's the Sagu lines have only lost a single life right now. Exactly. Oh, and that being the second one, Blue's getting a <laughs> kill onto Aether. But you two. Answering back, Mew Mewtwo oh. and Ogden pushing forward, trying to prevent this capture yep. onto the B or the A point. And it looks like they are actually able to capture it. And now the Sagu lines just have to prevent them from capturing this B objective. And it's much easier to defend one objective than two. Yeah. So Sagu already getting a lot of picks off early on. Already pulled the the life count down halfway, and so just having to defend one point, 14 lives remaining. Uh, they're sitting in what I believe is a comfortable spot for them. Absolutely. And here we see Ognan holding down that, that uh, lobby entryway. Doing great work at stopping any AM Cats advance. The AM Cats, they've got it in them. Pushing together, working as a team, closing in. But man... Sagu was just kind of roaming right there, and the, now they're losing the point. So they're going to have to get on there and retake, but it's going to be a hard-fought battle. Wow, Aether with a double kill. Aether with three kills there, My doing goodness. so good at stopping this AM Cat's hold. And there's that retake that we were just saying that they needed to get. Snowbear trying to get the wall bang through the wow. couch, but Mike isn't cool with a it. double kill there. And now the AM Cats are in the single digits on lives, getting down to seven. It's it's not looking too good for the. AM Cats, they're they're very close. They've got to play smart, play defensive, but they need to capture this point. They only have 30 seconds. So the AM Cats have to find a way to get onto this point and start capturing it, or they could lose this round. There's only 20 seconds left remaining. I'm not sure if there's enough time to capture this point, Evan. So it oh looks no. like Sagu will get another one, but they still have to play at least one more round here. Yeah. Yeah, and the AM Cats have no more respawn, so when they're down, they're down. There's two players left. Blues and Mike is a cool. They don't have much time. And unfortunately, they weren't able to get onto that mm -hmm. control point. And now the Sagu Lions go up two to zero. And this is match point, set point, all the points. They, they just need to capture the points yes. now. That, that's the goal here. If they can capture the points and not lose all of their remaining lives, mm -hmm. We may see a Sagu Lions 3-0 sweep, but as you said, the AM Cats have it in them. This could oh, be their game where they definitely. come back, reverse it, this get a win here. Need something to click, but I think it might be too late for them now. They they weren't able to swing that momentum fast enough, and now I think Sagu could potentially run away. But I mean, only time will tell as we get into this last round. Yep. Well, this potentially last round, excuse potentially me. Potentially last round. But as we get into this game-changing round here, <laughs> We have both sides and oh my goodness, Aether. Aether. Oh my goodness, Aether. Running through, not letting the AM Cats get any kind of ground, and they're already capturing Zone A. That was incredibly fast. 
An angry snow bear and Mewtwo holding down the fort. Sagu just taking away so much space so fast, and they're already trying to capture Zone A, and they're doing a pretty good job at it, too. They've already got, almost got to that second tick already, but... Oh, I'm not sure if he okay. got it. Okay. Okay, there's uh, they, no one there. They did Snow get Bear it. Snow Bear was there, yeah. Yeah, Snow Bear was there. I didn't see him at first. But they've got to that second tick, so it's not going to take a whole lot for them to capture the rest of that point. Wow, Mewtwo trying to use his movement to his advantage. This game is so fast-paced. Movement is a big part of this. But while you're sprinting, you can't actually use your gun. Mm, I'm so. telling you, it, it's, it's a game changer. You can move all the d live long day, but you can't shoot anyone at the same time. Yeah. So it's like you can dodge bullets, but you can't shoot back. So yeah. eventually they're going to get you. Yeah. So being knowing when to sprint, knowing when oh. to have your gun out and aim, those are the things that these Sagu Lions players and AM Cat players have trained, worked hard. And the Sagu Lions have already captured that B control. All they have to do is get the remaining tick of the A control. They have and about a minute 40 left to do it. I think they have a lot of time, but AM Cats can now hold this point relatively well once you have 4 and 4. Oh, but Ogden getting a knife kill. Oh Ogden my goodness. getting a kill with a knife. That is so incredibly difficult in this game because you have to get right up on the enemy. Oh my goodness, Ogden. Are you okay, dude? <laughs> Ogden wants this to be over and done. Sagu trying to capture the point, but trying I believe that was Aether so was the hard. last one there. Get taken down. Ogden's going to rush back in there. He finds one, takes him out. He's just trying to find the last stick by himself. Finds a second. Wow, oh. second kill, and it looks like it's almost done oh here. Oh my goodness, Ogden. And there it is. The Sagu Lions are going to take this Week 5 regular season ECAC win. That will put them at 4-1, and one, and guess what that does, Crazy Kyle? That qualifies them for playoffs right there. Come on, somebody. And the Sagu Lions are going to be going to the ECAC playoffs. That is a very big deal. Mm -hmm. And I think as of right now, that confirms we have two teams, two teams. going to our playoff. That's our uh, Super Smash Brothers team. Hey, just and remember, Smash Bros. is undefeated right now. we gotta, we got to make sure that's clear. They're that's the 5-0 undefeated yes, team. Yes, yes, yes. But here's where we're looking at the score. Mike isn't cool with 15 kills for the, um, the uh, AM, Cats. AM Cats team. But the Sagu Lions were seeing Aether and Ogden getting multiple double kills, multiple mm -hmm. triple kills, not giving up any room to the AM Cats and just doing a really good job at playing together. I want to see if we can get another shot of that knife kill because that, that was incredible. Oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting to see that tonight. But. So well played by Aether. He, he was done. He was tired of this <laughs> tomfoolery and wanted the game to be closed. And the Sagu Lions just showing a really strong performance here in this week five. And I think mm -hmm. this is really good. This is exactly what they need because last week they did great, mm -hmm. but they kind of struggled a little bit. Yep. They played against a team that had practiced these 1v1 gunfights. They had practiced these. Th their aim was just impeccable, and their strategy was there to match it. And the Sagu Lions just weren't able to kind of push their own forward. Mm -hmm. But this week, the Sagu Lions playing to their strengths, keeping their heads up, playing smart, playing aggressive, yep. and they got away with a 3-0 sweep. Very well played by the Sagu Lions, and I really liked what I saw. Oh, I absolutely. think they did a great job. It was a very fun match to watch tonight, um, to say the least. But Sagu, they were sitting at number five in the ECAC season in Division B. There's 44 teams in Division B. So sitting at number five is pretty good, but there were about 12 or 13 teams tied for fifth. And so with this win, that moves them up higher. So you can say they're one of the top five teams right now in Division B. And so definitely this will be a team to watch as they continue on into the playoffs. First of all, you got to get through the rest of the season. You got to make sure you get your seating right. But definitely when playoff time rolls around, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. And our Saigu Lions showing a dominating performance going on into week six with a 4-1 record so far that is a yep. really great place to be in um and i think we could see what could be a potentially a really strong regular season record for our sagu lions Definitely. call of duty team but crazy kyle do you have Definitely. anything else to send off our audience with you got any closing thoughts Honestly, dude, this was a lot of fun match to watch. I don't usually I don't get to watch these matches. I'm busy Friday nights. Mm -hmm. I had to night open, so I had to come watch and support the boys and cast at the same time. So this was a whole lot of fun to do. Thank y'all for having me here. I guess you could say guest co-host because I don't get to do this often anymore. Yeah, fair enough. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and and for 
Um, everyone know we really want to appreciate you and say thank you for being a part of the Sagu Sports Network community. And also go follow and like and share and mm. talk to us, YouTube, Twitch, whatever it may be. Connect with us. We want to connect with you. We want to talk to you. And also the Sagu Esports. They have a Twitch. They have a YouTube. You do a lot of the social media stuff yes, on, on Instagram, on Facebook, and all of the platforms. So please go reach out to them. Talk to what would essentially be Kyle <laughs> and the people he allows in the circle of that. And reach out to them. They want to connect with you. We want to connect with you. And we really appreciate you for being a part of this broadcast. Can I piggyback off of that real quick? Yeah, um, yeah. There's been so much support on the Instagram and YouTube recently. We're one of the most followed Sagu sports teams on Instagram right now. Wow. So that, that's an incredible blessing. Yeah. So. That's awesome. So it's a lot of fun to have all of you there, resharing the content, liking, just seeing those likes come in is really nice. It, it continues the guys forward a little bit more because they know that there's support behind them. That everybody's like, oh, esports is just some random thing on a Bible school. But when people rally behind and support, it gives these these players motivation to keep going. So that's been really good. But I specifically want to shout out the YouTube right now. That has been going incredible recently. So yep. all of these stream recaps, Twitch will eventually delete one day. Sadness. Mm, sad. But we saved them and uploaded them to YouTube quick enough so you can go back and watch these whenever you want at any time. And so the viewership there has been incredible recently to say the least. And so definitely go check out the YouTube Sagu Esports. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, we want to thank you for watching this broadcast of our Call of Duty Sagu Lions Esports team. And this has been the Sagu Sports Network.